Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Parisa, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to use device encryption. Azure OS is already an extremely secured operating system. But even then, let's imagine you're losing your device or your UD pocket got stolen, some attackers might have local access to data. In that case, we have the device encryption, also known as pre-boot authentication. So the main goal of the device encryption feature itself on the OS level is to obfuscate corporate identity data. Let's imagine the device boots up and you will already have a boot splash or a wallpaper or in addition, a company logo from your Citrix environment, let's imagine. That's something that you can avoid by using that feature. Obviously, if you are using shared workplace or already Active Directory log information, this kind of stuff would not happen. But still the boot splash or maybe the wallpaper of the Active Directory login dialog would show up. And if you have activated it, you will see also which domain you are using. On the other hand, if you think of the interaction of the local operating system itself, never forget that if the device boots up without any additional security features, it will boot directly into the desktop. And since we have a lot of different security optimization that you can deploy, you might already have missed one. And an attacker could use, let's imagine, the Control Alt F12 switch to move from the graphical user interface to the command line. That's something that you want to avoid. And just to be sure that you never missed anything, the preboot authentication will close all the discussions. Then, on the other hand, Speaking not about third-party devices, but our own ones, let's speak about the UD7 like an example. We have the chain of trust going from the bootloader over the UEFI, secure boot, etc. Everything is secured from A to Z. If you think now about the hardware UEFI level into the operating system, we just missed, let's say, one small piece maybe. And that's where the device encryption will fulfill that last gap. And on the last hand, if you have a compliance check or if your company is having security requirement that push every device has to be encrypted, that's a step I would recommend to follow. Like in every tutorial, we are starting with Universal Management Suite, also known as UMS. Here we have our device, which is already started and might look like use a new company. So start it directly into the desktop with some sessions on the desktop, also with a specific name, which might lead to an information about which company we're targeting, or maybe which kind of connections we want to look at. Since most of our customers are not changing the icon itself, we already know that we have to target Citrix and or an ADP session. Then in the next step, we already know that home demo might be the domain to use, and then try to attack the corresponding backend. So that's where we are at the moment, if nothing else is configured. Now let's look about the device encryption. First of all, we'll create a profile as usual. Which is based on the latest firmware. So just in case we have some requirements regarding the minest minimum firmware, which is the 1106210 to use that feature. So we are using the latest firmware for the profile, then going to security, device encryption. You already have everything you need in that window. I would recommend to change first device encryption mode to something like activate if you want to activate it because keep might already have been activated locally and saying keep would mean that you keep the local configuration, which might be great. But in some case, if you want to test it, or if you want to deploy your setting over all devices, I would recommend use activate. Then the certification type is predefined and it's just password. You have no other possibilities there, but it's what we are seeking for. So we have no TPM at the moment. It's really just a passcode alphanumerical with special characters. The other configurations like security level or target time is something that we'll not cover today because it goes a little bit deeper in the authentication method itself. But we'll just go through the other configuration on the bottom, which is related to the password strength and character that you can use. So I would recommend to set the password length to a minimum of 10 
just because it's a little bit more secure than eight, but it's definitely something which is related to your company uh, requirements and to your security department more than just my recommendation. But in that case, I would definitely say that having the password must contain all, if you want to be sure that every minimum configuration here will be kept. If you just choose two off or three off, it would just take two or three of that different configurations. So I would recommend to stay on all just to be sure that you cover everything. Then if you are already knowing that your users might be across the world, might be an idea to have some special characters allowed and something and someone of them disallowed just because they're sometimes hard to reach over a hotkey on the keyboard itself. So now you might ask, is it anything I had to do? Basically, yes. Just save the configuration and assign it now to your endpoint. Just one small piece of requirement that I would share with you before going straight forward. Please check that your device is holding a valid time and date on the OS level. That's not only mandatory, but it's definitely a good practice for myself. And on the other hand, what I would also recommend is to check that your BIOS time and date are not completely out of date. Um, can happen if your BIOS CMOS battery is out of order or just because, yeah, there is a bug or it was resetted to factory defaults and never adapted again. Just to be clear, would be a great idea to check if the BIOS date and time is set correctly. An offset of one hour is not that bad, but if you're going out of order, that might cause some issues uh, with the verification itself. So now I'm switching back to my device and now my user, myself, has to create a new password. In that case, as every user, I would try to enter something like 1234 and again re-enter the new password 1234 and click apply. You're already seeing that the password strength itself is pretty weak. Oh, I cannot set that as expected. Okay, then let's try one, two, three, four, and an A. One, two, three, four, and an A. Still cannot be applied. Basically, it would rely on the setting that you made in your profile regarding the special characters, regarding the minimum capital or uh, minuscule letters in the profile. So here we have the other configuration that we have to fulfill. So we have to meet at least eight characters. So we are now hitting medium, which is okay, not that great, but okay. So let's just check. All oh, right, so we can also see which password we entered by just clicking ABC, which is not the standard eye icon that you would expect, but that's the way how the user can double check his password. And that's great. We have our uppercase, minuscule, we have numbers and a special character. Just double check that the configuration the confirmation is the same. Oh no, forget the exclamation mark. So I would just click apply and you will obviously get again an error message that we have to correct it. So now we should be good. Let's click apply and let the device update the configuration. So please do not interrupt that step and obviously do not close the window or just stand by the device or just push the, put the power supply off. This step is pretty important. And here we go. So your credential was updated successfully. As soon as I click now, OK, nothing happened. And that's basically OK, because my user wants to continue working or to do something else. And now we should be good. My recommendation would be to ask your customer to reboot the device after doing that step, because it's not done automatically just to check that the configuration that you made hit the device correctly and that the user can log in again. So now the device is rebooting and we should see the login dialog in a second. Here we go. So device encryption is active, press end to login. So let's try now a random password, something which is not the right one. So we get already a count up about the fed of login attempts. So next try would be to enter the exact password. Just in case your user is working with different keyboards layout on his end, because he's using a USB keyboard, but his laptop is having another keyboard layout, we introduce their um, complete layout chooser, so the user can choose whatever he or she likes. 
And yes, there is also a touchscreen support in that window. So you can touch screen, touch keyboard support in that window. So you have basically everything you need um, to enter the password. And if you are not wanting to do that, you can reboot or shut down the device again using the power button. Press enter to log in or just click the arrow and the device should now boot up as usual. So now my desktop is appearing as expected. That's basically the device encryption. You can obviously do even more by configuring the um, password security level by adapting the kind of password aggregation functions, but that's something which is for the more advanced users. So now you might ask what happens if something failed? I would firstly mention that if your user is doing some kind of brute force, so um, entering three times again the bad password because he just forgot his password, there will always be a delay which will be added. So let's imagine that your user would do that three times, four times, it will be a 10 second at each fail attempt. So just say maybe or document that for your for, for user that entering too often a wrong password may increase this time every time and that obviously the password entry field is disabled during that period of time. If you're using some iOS or Android devices you might ask hey is there a device encryption uh, which would also wipe the data if uh, something is happening too often or for brute force is happening. Yes, there is a registry key for that. Just reach out to us if you are interested in getting into it. Now let's reboot the device again and doing some specific step which is related to the boot manager, which you can access by pressing the escape button. So that's something which is still available until the moment where the bootloader for the encryption pathways entering dialog is opening. So even there, you could say, okay, I can't remember my, my password because it was given a long time ago and I didn't write it down on a post-it. So reset to factory default is a step that you can achieve here in a specific manner, but still not as usual. So you have to enter the password again here, just to be clear. And now we should be able to see the standard reset to factory defaults window. Right. Next step, we'll still reboot the device and go into this boot menu, which might help if you have some issues regarding the login dialog and you are sure that the user is entering the exact password with exact special characters. You have the ability to use the verbose boot, which will give you a little bit more insight about where the device is hanging and which step is maybe covering that. Not saying it will do everything and will show everything, but if there is another failure, you might see it there. So entering the path code again will then bring us into the boot process. And we should be good. The next question might be, can I upgrade or downgrade the device? Yes, you can. I would just not go under the 11.06 uh, 280, just because my personal opinion was that it was introduced such near to that version that I would not go beneath. But you can definitely upgrade and downgrade the firmware. There is a specific use case where some specific partitions might not be. If you would go something like 11.05, uh, just because the user home partition where the browsing history and some other data is stored in, as well as the custom partitions, are not covered by that. So just be aware that I would not downgrade too far away. What should you do if the user is uh, losing his password? In that case, I would recommend to reflash the device by using the OSC or by using your PXE appliance to redeploy the image without migrating the old data. So now you might ask, how can I disable that feature? 
basically just removing the profile from the endpoint would not be enough. Since as soon as the device gets a new configuration, it will ask the device and the end user to enter the old password to disable the encryption. So just removing the profile is not enough, you have a last interaction with the end user. And as soon as you enter the right password that you entered during the initial configuration, the configuration will be updated and the encryption disabled. Obviously, do not interrupt that process, please. Here we go. So now the device will not ask again for a password during the pre-boot authentication. So just in case, remember also that if you want to disable this feature, the standard setting inside of your profile is keep. So if you want to disable it, please send it to disable if you want to send it out to all devices. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.